Hey everybody, John here, all miniatures great and small. Uh, today I'm just doing a army showcase. This is a Team Yankee Swedish force that I'm going to be using in an upcoming battle report. So I thought um, rather than make what could already be a long battle report longer by going into um, length on this list, I thought I would make a separate video uh, because I thought maybe this would be an interesting topic even outside of that specific battle report just building and working with uh, Swedish and, um, you know, my thoughts on list building and maybe get some, you know, community feedback and let me know, um, you know, where I'm going terribly wrong here. All right, so this is an 80-point uh, uh, Swedish list. It has, it's basically a armored um, rifle company. That's the core formation. So when you build a Team Yankee list, you choose a formation or multiple formations, and um, that is your what you build from, you know, your building blocks. Your core formation is important because that's what keeps you in the game. If you lose too many units in your core formation, it doesn't, doesn't matter how many supporting units you have, um, the game's over and uh, your forces run away. So... One of the first things I like to do when building a force is try to make sure I've got uh, a meaty uh, core formation that's not going to run away with one or two uh, platoons breaking and running. So this formation starts with an HQ. So we've got here a, this is a PBV302 transport and a, <clears throat> basically just a command team. There's nothing really special about him besides he's got good stats, I guess. Um, but he doesn't have any anti-tank missiles. They're just carrying AK-4 uh, assault rifles. So that's my HQ. Now, most of the times, in, especially in Team Yankee, the HQ unit does have better stats um, than the rest of it. Usually it's one better uh, for things like skill. But um, oftentimes that doesn't really come much up uh, in the game. Okay, so also in the formation I have three uh, infantry platoons. Two of them are identical, and I have upgraded them. So normally, and in the Swedish um, infantry platoon, there are some options. Normally, it comes with three uh, MG teams with a like a anti tank or like a law. It's called a P Scott, <clears throat> and then three uh, anti tank teams, which you kind of see reflected over here. So there would be three of each. Um, you can upgrade the P. Scots to a better P. Scott, which is basically a better um, anti-tank. It goes from a base of 13 to an anti-tank of 17 uh, for one point. So I did that for all three of the platoons. So those three stands uh, are all upgraded. And then I could also replace one of the missile launcher uh, teams, which in this case... I represent with a infantry team that uh, has like a bazooka looking thing. By replacing that with a uh, RBS-56 Bill missile team, and I've done that for two of my three platoons, and these are these small stands with a much beefier looking missile launcher, right? Um, and that replaces one of the, um, the rifle slash bazooka teams um, that's here. Uh, so those two have been upgraded, and this one has, uh, those been upgraded twice, these have been upgraded once, so I'm spending some points to um, max out or make my infantry platoons as hard as I can. They also have a transport. Now the transport is a PBV-302. Um, think if you play Americans, that's your M113 uh, APC. So these are APCs. They do have a... Um, I think it's a 20 millimeter cannon on the top of the hull there, which does give it some uh, bite. I mean, 20 millimeter cannon is only, I think, AT6 in this regard, but it's got anti helicopter um, on that gun um, and, um, you know, light armor. It's definitely going to have to be a little careful around them. Um, but anything that's got like a front armor five or six, you know, or higher is not going to really have to worry about them. But then there's three of those transports in each platoon. There's two teams in each transport. 
Uh, rounding out the core formation, we also have three centurions. Now, this was an interesting choice. You could take centurions in that tank slot, or you could take uh, S-tanks. And the S-tanks, if uh, you remember, I've, I've showed case those ones before, they are more of an ambush tank. The centurion has uh, better armor, but the S-tank has a slightly better gun, and it's better at ambushing which is, uh, you know, helpful in certain scenarios. But the Centurion is not a bad tank at all. With front armor 14, it's got a 105 millimeter gun, so it's 18-19, with all the kind of stuff you'd expect, like laser rangefinder, smoke. The only downside, like a lot of British tanks, is they're only rate of fire one on the move. S-Tank is the same way, though, so either way, these guys coming on from reserve are, are only shooting one shot each. So that's my core formation. So I have five units in my core formation. The HQ, three infantry platoons, and then the uh, centurions. So that's pretty good. And then outside of my core formation, um, the first thing I wanted to do was make sure that I have some anti-air. And if you collect Swedes or you've looked at Swedes, they don't have a lot of anti-air options. Um, they have the the, uh, what is this called? The acronyms on these things are torturous. This is an LVRBV701. And basically it's got a um, missile launcher sticking out of the hatch. This is just basically a, ver a variant or version of the APCs. Um, but you can only take a max of three of these per platoon and you can only take two platoons. So I only have six uh, dedicated anti-air vehicles. And then these aren't the best missiles either. They are two shots. Um, I think they're four up firepower. So I guess that's not bad, but if a, a Soviet player who can bring a lot of air um, can overwhelm the air defenses of the Swedish player quite, quite quickly. Um, and things like even the Norwegians, they're, they have a very similar unit, but it's, uh, you can take them in units of four, which is uh, a lot nicer. All right, then um, I also have a unit of band cannons. That's these big honking boys over here. One of my favorite uh, units, and probably one of the reasons why I decided to collect um, a Swedish force was because of the band cannons. They are very cool. They're, they have a 15.5-centimeter uh, cannon with an autoloader. And I've mentioned this before in battle reports, but that autoloader special rule is amazing. Um, when firing an art artillery bombardment, re reduce the score needed to hit by one. So if you're hitting, a, like Soviets, on the first attempt, you'd normally hit them on a 3-plus. Now you're hitting them on a 2-plus. It's almost guaranteed. Um, any artillery that has autoloader, Look at it. Try to get it in your list if you can. It's definitely, um, it's definitely worth it, and makes not auto loading artillery look a little worse in the game, to be honest. But uh, the band cannons are really nice, um, and they, I think they look cool. They're ungainly. They look goofy, but that's uh, that's what I like about it. Now supporting uh, the Swedish forces, I have Finnish forces. So they are part of the general um, support, uh, part of the Swedish list. Uh, and it just represents that those two countries kind of work um, closely together, kind of like how in the Norwegian uh, list you can take uh, U.S. Marine Corps units. Uh, so I decided to take two units. Uh, the first one is going to be a unit of Carnations. Um, and these are typically Soviet artillery. They, um, they're fairly inexpensive for what you get. Uh, they are 122 millimeters, so they're not quite as powerful as the band cannons. Uh, but they are cheap. They do have good skill, which is important for ranging in. And it gives me, crucially, another unit of artillery. So that's another unit that can drop smoke. I think it's important to have um, multiple smoke um, dealing units on the table, even if you don't end up using them, just having that option can be pretty good. And then last but not least, we're bringing 
the T-72 FM-2, which is the Soviet uh, T-72B that the Finns use. And uh, that's these guys over here. Uh, again, if you saw my what's on the table, I talked about these. I really like these uh, tanks. I think they look cool. Um, and three of these are, I think it's probably the most expensive unit in the list coming in at like 19 points. But for those 19 points, you're getting front armor 17, uh, side armor 8. These are hit on fours, which are always nice, you know, better than your typical Soviets. And they have that 125 millimeter gun, so it's anti-tank 22, two plus firepower. Uh, so really, um, you know, really nasty gun. Now, like Soviet tanks where this was built, it's only rate of fire one, but that if, if you hit someone with it, it's gonna hurt. So that's it. So that's the, the list. And then to kind of go over the thoughts, I already mentioned Thought number one is always trying to um, have a beefy core formation that's not going to be easily broken. Uh, the other thing to look at is anti-air for players who are bringing helicopters and uh, airplanes. Um, you know, enough anti-air to protect your assets because they're going to be going after your artillery, your infantry, they're going to be going after everything if you don't have some kind of threat on the board for anti-air. Um, the other thing would be anti-armor, and between the challengers and the, uh, or sorry, the centurions, not challengers, <laughs> I wish. Uh, the centurions and the T-72s, that should give me enough anti-tank. Plus, the infantry platoons have quite a surprising uh, amount of anti-tank with their um, missiles. The rifle platoons, the bill has a range of uh, 40 inches, these small ones, and the uh, the P Scots have a range of 16, so you know if, if they're going after objectives or something that infantry are covering, uh, armor might have a, a bad day. Um, so that's that's kind of the overall thought. The other thing you have to think about when building a Team Yankee list is reserves, and it's something that a lot of people ignore or don't really think too much about. But when you play a uh, a force that's got reserves you've got to think about what you want to leave off table. So typically it is 40% of your force, which in this case is a whopping 32 points. So if I do happen to draw a mission where I'm in reserves or delayed reserves, I've got to decide 32 points of this list to keep off the table. Um, when you're building like uh, main powers like US or uh, you know, French or West German with very expensive, uh, well, potentially very expensive units, it's a lot easier to do it. Ideally, I only have one or two units in reserve so that they come in quickly. Um, with these Nordic nations, that's a lot harder to do. Um, like I said, the most, Im the most expensive unit is probably the T-72s. Um, and then after that, maybe the artillery and the... Um, Centurions. Um, but even then, like the T-72s are, um, I think, 19 points? Yes, 19 points for the three. So that, get me, that gets me close to the, uh, the 32 that I need to exclude off the board. Um, but still, I've got, basically, I need to come up with another, I think, 13 points. Um, and that could be, depending on what your opponent brings, um, you can, you know, kind of tweak it. If they don't bring any air at all, it's a no-brainer. The anti-aircraft vehicles go into reserve. Um, or if I happen to know in the mission, like my opponent has to put his stuff in reserve first. If he puts all his helicopters in reserve, uh, then I might choose to not have these on the table because I won't need them right away. But if he's bringing two units of uh, uh, helicopters and airplanes, then I'm definitely going to want to include those in the uh, initial list. And in that case, I might keep off a, a platoon of infantry or the Challenger, or sorry, the Centurions and the T-72s. Um, so there's different ways you can play that. But it's important when you design your list, you keep that in mind 
and it also is helpful or courteous to your opponent when you're playing a game that uh, when you roll the mission and you realize, oh, it's a, uh, you know, reserves, I need to figure out 40% of my force, and then taking that time to figure out exactly what you're going to do for the next 20 minutes. Um, it's always better if you, you know, have an idea in your head and you go with, uh, you know, you go with a plan you've already kind of thought about, or at least tweaked it. So, like I said here, I've got a couple of options depending on what my opponent brings. But um, otherwise, the overall, the Swedish, I think, are um, an interesting force. I played them once or twice, and I think I've won a game and lost a game. And that was using my S tanks uh, as an, like an S tank company. This is the first time I'm taking uh, infantry company based. And it'll be interesting to see what will happen. I'm kind of excited to see what happens. So let me know down in the comments below. Do, you, do any of you guys collect uh, Swedish forces? How would you do this? How would you tweak uh, an 80 point infantry company list? What changes would you make? Um, you know, you notice I, I didn't include any air. In here just because it was too expensive. Um, so I think I've got a good solid force here, but uh, only the battlefield will tell. But again, let me know down in the comments below what you think. Uh, I do appreciate you guys watching, and keep on gaming.